Late Springs 1483 Two Brothers and the Tower of London By midsummer, those brothers were nowhere to be found and their uncles sat on the throne. Everyone said that he killed his own two nephews to get to the throne, but is this what actually happened though? It was the early summer of 1483, England's young princes, King Edward V and Richard, could often be found outside, you know, shooting their bows and arrows with abandon and gimballing around the, around the way your kids always do. But this was not their backyard. They were in the Garden of the Tower of London, playing against the backdrop of a bloody long tug war for the throne. More than 500 years later, and the world historians are still tantalized by the mystery of the brothers' disappearance. My name is Sohail, you're watching Epic History, and this is the story of so-called the princes in the tower. They were the only two sons of King Edward IV, Edward V and Richard. They were 12 and 9 years old, respectively. The, their father named his brother Richard as a lord protector of his brother Edward V. Their uncle was Anthony Woodville and Richard had them arrested just because he feared being usurped by the Woodville family. By mid-May, Richard had installed Edward V in the Tower of London for his safety purposes, which is logical enough, as this was during the War of Roses. Despite all the talk about keeping Edward V in the Tower for his own safety, it quickly became clear that Richard's endgame wasn't to see his brother heir securely enthroned. In June, Parliament proclaimed that because Edward IV once had a pre-contract to marry Lady Eleanor Butler but had secretly married Elizabeth Woodville instead, his children with the latter weren't legitimate heirs. Weeks later, on July 6th, Richard himself assumed the throne as King the Richard III. What happened to the two princes after that is one of the biggest mysteries in the British royal history. Contemporary reports are exceptionally rare and it's hard to nail down exact dates for a number of events in the timeline. Dominic Mancini, an Italian monk, says that he and his brother were withdrawn into the inner apartments of the tower proper and day by day began to be seen more rarely behind the bars and windows, till at length they ceased to, to, to appear altogether. Mancini went on, the physician Argentine, the last of his attendants who ser whose services the king really enjoyed, reported that the young king, like a victim prepared for sacrifice, sought remission of his sins by daily confession and penance, because he believed that death was facing him. Well, all we can really glean from the sparse sources is that while the princes were originally well cared for and free to be outside, their confinement in the tower morphed into flat-out imprisonment as their uncle assumed power. Well, the suspects. The simplest explanation is that Richard III had his nephews murdered so they would never threaten his hold on his power on his throne. There were rumors about this theory during Richard's reign as well, the Great Chronicle reported that after Easter 1484, there was much whispering among the people that the king had put the children of King Edward to the death. Richard III had reason to be worried about getting ousted. And not just by those hoping to restore Edward V to power, after all the War of the Roses will still, was still raging. In October 1483, Richard III's former ally, Henry Stafford, Duke of Buckingham, staged a Lancastrian rebellion to replace the king with exiled Henry Tudor. It failed, but it's been suggested that Stafford may have assassinated the two princes around this time so they would not threaten Henry Tudor's claim to the throne, and maybe also so the public would blame Richard for the murders. Another theory is that Stafford killed the princes as a way to integrate you know, ingratiate himself with the king before their rift and ensuring rebellion. Even if Stafford himself dealt the death blows, though it would hardly absolve Richard of all involvement. According to Jeremy Potter's book, Good King Richard, an account of Richard III and his reputation, historians believe that Stafford would never have dared to act without Richard's complicity or at least connivance. A lot of famous writers and historians wrote this story in a way that sometimes it becomes kind of a hard to read, but evidently these theories are weak. Some were biased towards the Tudor and was writing some 30 years after the alleged crime, and not to mention the general lack of evidence to back up the stories. 
It's also tempting to hold out hope that the princess escaped. In the years after their disappearance, two unrelated men each claimed to be one of the missing heirs. And while both were written off as impostors, one coped to being a boatman's son and the other started impersonating a different royal nephew. Some people still believe otherwise though, but there is circumstantial evidence suggesting that the princes may indeed have perished during their internment in the Tower of London. In 1674, during Charles II's reign, laborers unearthed two child-sized skeletons buried 10 feet beneath a staircase in the Tower of London's White Tower, which says a lot about their uncle Richard the usurper, but in 1933 those remains were analyzed and conclusions not in black and white though. Reports say that, don't even know for example that the victims were definitely male, the only thing scholars generally agree on is that the pair were around the prince's ages when they died. And that hardly proves anything, because they are not the only children's bones that have been found in the tower, there are others as well. <clears throat> Britain recent authorities said that there were other bur buried in the abbey whose in the abbey whose identity is somewhat uncertain including Richard II and allowing the allowing these bones to be examined could well set a precedent for other requests I do not believe we are in the business of satisfying curiosity this is what the king said as as of certifying that remains in the abbey tombs are what they are said to be Case is closed, but we are hoping that some king or queen will come and will give the permission to reopen the case so these remains can be analyzed with the today's technology and I think it will be a lot easier now. But until then, this is one maybe murder mystery that will stay unsolved. And this is where I say goodbye. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace. Don't wanna ride away